Bill Berberian as the McCutcheon Mavericks are set to take on the Panthers of Gary Roosevelt in the first game of the Lafayette Semi-State. This is the first appearance ever for McCutcheon in this semi-state. And we asked Coach Rick Peckinpah to talk to us a little bit about what he thinks will be the keys for his ball club to win today's ball game. I guess it'd be the, the transition game. We uh, have watched the film where they like to press a lot, and they get the rebound, they're going to throw it long several times and try to get that easy layup. If we can prevent those things from happening, if we can prevent the, the easy layup on their end off of either a steal on their press or off a quick bat, uh, rebound and a long pass, we feel like we can be in the game. And if we can stay in that game for the first half and our kids get the confidence that we can, then we'll make it a game in the second half. Bill Berberian, the tempo definitely going to be a key today. Yeah, the Mavericks have to control the tempo. Roosevelt wants the ball to go up on the boards as often as possible because they got a rebounding edge. There, there isn't that much difference in the height of the starting uh, team, but Roosevelt has their, they can jump better, they're physically stronger, and so they're going to, they're, they'll play to their strength if they get the ball up on the boards. They want a fast-moving game. Ma the Mavericks want to control it. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the play-by-play -play of the first game of the Lafayette Semi-State. Stay with us. March is Frozen Food Month, and there's no better place than Payless to discover the variety of taste in frozen food. Come on, follow me. We have something for every meal and any taste, even snacks and desserts. Like four varieties of banquet family entrees, or all flavors of homemade brand ice cream. Nutritious, quick-to-fix meals as close as your freezer. Life was never this good in the Arctic. You know what Payless is all about? Meet you at Arnie's. 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 For great pizzas, salads, and sandwiches, stop in at Arnie's in Market Square or Arnie's at Columbian Park. Meet you at Arnie's. Mark Whitlock. The reserves for each team are being introduced to the crowd. Let's join public address announcer Rick Miles. Number 40, a six-foot, five-inch senior, Steve Miller. Now introducing from the Gary Regional, the champion Roosevelt Panther. Number four, a six-foot, two-inch senior, Albert Turner. Number 10. A 5 foot 11 inch sophomore, Danny Smith. Number 12, a 6 foot 3 inch sophomore, Victor Williams. Number 13, a 6 foot 8 inch junior, Broderick Jelly. Number 14, a 6 foot junior, Anthony Kelly. Number 15, a 6 foot 2 inch junior, James Quayton. And number 21, a 6 foot senior, Terry Smith. Now, the starting lineups for McCutcheon at a forward. A six foot four inch junior, number 44, George German. For Roosevelt at forward, a six foot two inch senior, number five, Scotty Fields. McCutcheon at forward, a six foot two inch junior, number 42, Preston Smith. For Roosevelt at forward, a six foot three inch sophomore, number 25, Michael Pearson. For McCutcheon at center, a six foot five inch senior, number 30, Rod Hale. For Roosevelt at center, a six foot three inch senior, number 22, Kenneth Shannon. For McCutcheon at guard, a six foot one inch junior, number 24, Kyle Kerber. For Roosevelt at guard, a five foot 10 inch junior, number 23, Latwell Wayne Wrightsell. And for McCutcheon at guard, a six foot senior, number 22, Paul Hart. And for Roosevelt at guard, a five foot seven inch senior, Number three, Marvin Ray, the head coach of the McCutcheon Mavericks in his second season, Rick Peckinpah.
and the head coach of Roosevelt in his 12th year with the Panthers, Ronald Heflin. Well, Bill, McCutcheon coming in at 20 and four. They lost three of those four games when their defense allowed more than 60 points. McCutcheon wants to keep this game low scoring. Roosevelt, on the other hand, coming in with 19 on December 10th. They beat Wallace uh, and avenged that earlier loss in the sectional game. Yeah, you know, McCutcheon's going to uh, control what type of game it's going to be and uh, it's a matter of executing it. Now, whether they can stay with their game plan is going to depend upon how they protect the ball and then their shots are I think extremely important is to play Paul Hart at guard for McCutcheon. He's going to be the key to controlling. Michael Pearson, 25. In the man defense for McCutcheon. Shots, Bill. They puff in the man defense. Ray right missed the shot. And Penetrates it. Puts oh. up a layup just short. He's not, he's not, he's not loose, and he's got to be loose. He should have made that basket. Uh, it's very uh, not to out on, on opportunities like that. Turnover, number five, Scotty Fields loses the ball out of bounds. The man will have it back. Neither team with an opportunity. McCutcheon not letting the guards bring the ball up. Yeah, very strong. Ten times, McCutcheon two straight turns. And a McCutcheon's leading rebounder. Out there, and, and they've got to lose. And they Smith. can't get very. penetrates and a foul called underneath on number 42 Preston Smith or is it on 44 German if it's on German it was his second it is on George German and he seems to be hurt here comes the replay you'll see Ray penetrate German steps in to take the charge looks like he got kicked immediately Rick Beckenbaugh sending in 6'5 senior Steve Miller Averaging three points and three boards a game. Ray will go to the line an 86% free throw shooter. You know, Bill, one of the things that really impresses me about this Roosevelt. But uh, no rotation on that shot by Ray and rimmed out. Paul, if we're going to have a ball game here, McCutcheon has to loosen up. They're better ball players than that. And uh, it's a crime that... Uh, you know, the, I'm sure the coach is over there trying to figure out what he can do to get them to play their, their game. I think they're coming around a little bit now. I see. I think I see some signs. Well, Kerber and Harder handling the ball in the backcourt. Good pass. Open underneath is Miller. That's a big play. So Miller, the... momentum of the other team is to pass the ball around a while. Another way is to put the ball in the basket. Hale's a 76% free throw shooter. Makes it 6 to
were going alley-oop back door to Kerber. And McCutcheon didn't get back. Preston Smith picks up his second foul. Preston is one of the players that hasn't really loosened up. He's a great player for them, and he's come along real well during the season. Very strong at the end of the season, but he's not loose here, and he's a better ball player than that. He wanted to make sure that Scotty Fields didn't get the shot off, and he didn't. Air ball Air for ball. Fields. McCutcheon with a chance to tie. We've played four minutes of the first period here, the opening game of the Lafayette Semi-State. Hart penetrates and has the ball stripped, but alertly Preston Smith picks it up. He's one of the loose players on the team. He's playing very well. This is Hale, tie game, big basket. McCutcheon could probably do a pretty good job if they concentrate on getting the ball inside to Hale and German. Fields again. Not a very good shot. A block shot by Kerber. The Mavericks with a chance to take the lead. Tipped by Gary Roosevelt. And we have a timeout on the floor. McCutcheon has fought back to tie the game with 3.23 left in the first period. We're tied at six. Coral Ford is Lafayette's first choice for several very good reasons. We've made a commitment to providing professional service to every customer in Greater Lafayette. In less than a year, Coral Ford's drive for excellence has boosted our service satisfaction rating to first in the state. We want you to feel good about buying a new car or truck from us. Dedication to service, customer satisfaction, and the lowest prices. That's why Coral Ford is Lafayette's first choice. Bill Berberry. We have a tie ball game midway through the first period. McCutcheon falling behind 6-2 to two, has come back with two straight uh, possessions and two straight uh, baskets, two straight two-point uh, trips down the floor and tie game at six, Bill. Yeah. And the Mavericks right now uh, working the ball inside to Rod Hale. Their perimeter game isn't there. Uh, Hart missed his first shot. Preston Smith missed two shots. And uh, McCutcheon normally gets double-figure production out of those two players. But they missed their first two shots, and they don't seem to be ready to play yet. Yeah, they're, uh, McCutcheon's fortunate to be at 6-6 six and six right now because Roosevelt could have really uh, uh, got a pretty good spread down the floor. So it, it's uh, pretty good for McCutcheon. You know, you know uh, what might happen pretty soon, though. They've got uh, Roderick uh, Jolly on the... Uh, bench over there he's a big force for this uh, Roosevelt team 6-8 and when he comes in it might make a difference he is that shot Scotty Fields for Roosevelt is one for five from the floor we go under to Pearson turn around Roosevelt up eight to six nice shot by Pearson and he's only a sophomore Kerber, the junior, brings it up on Marvin Ray, the senior, puts him on the floor. Kerber has a jumper from the free throw line and misses it. Good shot for him. Fields comes down and gets the roll. Nice touch. Roosevelt now 10 to 6 in the lead. Preston Smith gets it to Paul Hart, and Hart bring it up. Again, Kerber. This is again from inside the free throw line. Awfully good shot for him. They're getting very good shot. They'll fall for him if they keep getting those and are patient enough. This is Marvin Ray on the near side. 23 is... It's a six-point Roosevelt lead now. Just under two minutes left in the period. Well, the, the, the pressure of the ball game has uh, gotten to McCutcheon a little bit. They're not moving quite as well as they normally do, I'm sure. Hart has his pocket pick. Kerber saves a fast break opportunity for Roosevelt. Playing a fine ball game. I think McCutcheon's offense functions a little bit better when Kerber runs point rather than Hart. Well, Hart's having a tough time right now. He, he'll loosen up. He's a big part of the team. McCutcheon's got to do it for there. them to win. 
Hart is a good scorer. McCutcheon's leading scorer, 16 points a game from the point guard position. Penetrates again. The foul's on right. Sell the junior, 5'10". Paul Hart will go to the line. And Hart is a good foul shooter, 76%. As a team, the Mavericks shooting from the floor two of nine at this point, while Gary Roosevelt is six of 11. Broderick Jolly, number 13, the 6'8 junior, checks in, as does number four, Albert Turner. Well, here comes Jolly. I think the fans will get a kick out of watching him play. He's He's a big force in there. I, I think you compared him to uh, almost the size of uh, the camps of Purdue. 6'8 uh, and well built. And when he goes He's in uh, a guard sub. Institute number 20, Joe Royer, 5'9 senior. Miller sits down. So short lineup right now for the Mavericks and a taller lineup for Gary Roosevelt. Hart misses the free throw. They're having a tough ball game. They need every point right at this stage of the game. They're six down right now. Team. Hart misses the second. Right. The Mavericks really having trouble. Yeah. We'll see if they go the alley oop to Jolly on the baseline. In the zone now. McCutcheon in the two three zone. Out pretty far with it. Actually giving some pressure to the guards there. Long jumper by Turner. Albert Turner. He started last year in football player as well as a basketball player. Good all-around athlete. Good help off the bench. Turner is one of their first subs that does a great job for him. He started last year when uh, Scotty Fields left Roosevelt to go play in Colorado. Preston Smith off the back of the iron. Out on the break, Roosevelt. Pulling up, Reitzel hits. A 10-point lead for Gary Roosevelt. 14 seconds left in the quarter. Really helped McCutcheon to get a bucket here. Need, a, need one right here. Smith goes out to Kerber. Not Needs shot. He oh, great job. Kyle Kerber at the buzzer. Ball game in the second period. It's 16 to 8, Roosevelt after one. No, we're not celebrating with dinner for two. Not a singing telegram. Instead, we're having the biggest anniversary sale in Carpetland's history. Save up to 50% on the all-new DuPont Stainmaster carpets. No, we're not sending flowers. But you'll find the lowest prices of the year guaranteed. Like multicolor and so cut and loop, just $9.99 a square yard. Complete installed with pad. And you can buy now and make no payments until June. Look for Carpetland USA's anniversary sale circular. And remember, for value. So spirit, a winning spirit, is best displayed by teamwork and dedication. At the Bank of Reynolds, we have that Hoosier pride. We must coordinate our best efforts to serve our customers. Time, hard work, and dedication will help you achieve your goals and dreams. Always remember that no one individual is more important than the whole team. At Bank of Reynolds, customer service is our team's main goal. Yeah! For over 50 years now, Reliable Exterminators has been locally owned. Up. They have grown considerably over the years to serve your needs even better. When you call Reliable Exterminators, you will deal with friendly and knowledgeable people. Reliable is very proud of their professional reputation. Reliable will provide pest and termite inspections and control service for homes, rental properties, and all types of commercial businesses. That's Reliable. Reliable for over 50 years. waited long enough. Now it's your turn for the good times. Kawasaki's got five new bikes, all for under $2,500. Five easy pieces for $1,987 to find. 
five new Kawasaki's, all under $2,500 at your Kawasaki dealer. See them all at KT Kawasaki, new in Lafayette. Well, McCutcheon will have the ball to start the second period. Royer is starting the second period. And George German with two fouls is back in the lineup for the Mavericks. Paul Hart goes underneath to Hale. Going on the 6'8", Broderick Jolly, and he draws the foul. He just jumped into him, Bill. Yeah, uh, Roosevelt playing very well at this particular point. I think uh, Coach Heflin is... Uh, uh, because they have a bit of a lead. The Carlton, on the other hand, uh, they can't try to force things and uh, they have to stay with the game plan. And, uh, chip away and get back into the ball game. Well, Hale hit his first two free throws and now hits his next two and McCutcheon has scored four points in a row to get to within 16 to 10. Ivan Ray brings it up for Roosevelt. Yes, uh, Smith is out now. Kerber playing the down position uh, for, for the Mavericks. Kerber has really been their steadiest player. That was a big basket at the end of this period. Yeah, Kerber is one of the few of the Mavericks that's really loose out there. Albert Turner's hit two straight now off the bench for Roosevelt. He came off the bench in the uh, regional semifinal and scored 19 points against Merrillville. They have some good uh, people off the bench. Uh, I, Broderick Jolly under there, a big man. They have quite a potent lineup in there right now. Herman misses the shot. Hale knocks the rebounds into the hands of Turner. Comes down, pulls up. He misses this one after hitting his first two. And Kerber is there for the rebound. Well, when you have a fellow like Jolly going down the floor, I think it, uh, he could have been a little more patient, got him under there. He might have got the rebound. Kerber on the baseline, goes around Jolly. Ball for his shot. Kerber going in against 6'8 at 6'2. Didn't have much future in this position. A turnover gives the ball back the ball game for the Roosevelt Panthers. Kenneth Shannon, the 6'3 senior. I don't know whether you've noticed it, Paul, but uh, one of the factors that we haven't talked about. There's a charge drawn by Royer. Turner picks up the foul. Albert Turner's a football player. He ought to be used to that. Very McCutcheon down six. Hart will have two shots and a chance to cut it to four. Here you see Fields. He was giving ground to Hart and got whistled. First foul, Fields. Royer's helped a lot, uh, Paul. Uh, he's uh, loose out there, a lot of spirit, picking, uh, picking up his teammates mentally. I think uh, it was a very good move uh, on Coach Peckinpah's part to put in Royer. Hart misses three free throws in a row, then hits that one. 18-13 in favor of Gary Roosevelt. This is Jolly around Hale. Whoa! Shot a five-footer and it was six. 
Really had better touch than that, but uh, he was out of it on that shot. Good defense by the Mavericks. They had two or three guys around and bothered him. Hale underneath. Back out to Hart. Misses the shot. Good and out. Play. Gets his own ball. German. McCutcheon just doesn't have a perimeter game. And they're better than that. They're better than that. They're just not loose. There's two or three of them out there that haven't loosened up. This is a team that shoots almost 50% from the floor. And right now, Bill, they're four of 18. Yeah. And they're still only down five. And I think they're a bit intimidated uh, by the physical size. As you can see on that play, Broderick putting in that rebound. Yeah, there wasn't anyone close. There couldn't be anybody close to him when he gets up that high. Well, McCutcheon has to put out him. German draws the foul. Shannon picks it up. Now, they can't. It's a tough thing, but uh, you've got to be able to come back after the block shots and uh, sort of thing and play your ball game. And uh, they have to be sold on their abilities to be able to do it. I think this team is, really. Yeah, their the shots just aren't falling back. That's right. That's right. I, I uh, After seeing the opening couple of minutes, Paul, I thought the great chance uh, against Roosevelt, the favorite, but. Four forty. There. Yeah, you got the ball in the play picking for you. On Marvin has one foul. Coming back in. Chaplin does a fine job of uh, shuttling these. You know, he doesn't weaken himself very much. He has, he, I, I'm sure, is uh, he works on there and sometimes uh, pretty strong. First one back Touch for a big man. Double down to German. On the part of uh, Roosevelt. Right now they're doing a pretty good job. Jolly's really leaning on Rod Hale inside, and the turnover gives the ball back to Gary Roosevelt. Gary Roosevelt very hard on the defense to cause the uh, cause the turnover. A timeout on the floor. It's Roosevelt by 7, 24, 70, 25, left in the first half of the opening game of the Lafayette Boys Semi-State here on TV 18. Make your house a home with Mr. Steve's Rentals. Look what's in store for you for March. Perfect for home entertainment, a cable-ready 25-inch color console TV and VCR. Watch and record your favorite shows and movies. March special, just $19.95 a week. And look at this beautiful Western-style furniture group. Your choice of a five-piece or six-piece group. For the home. We are back at Mackey Arena. Paul Stouter along with Bill Berberian. The McCutcheon Mavericks right now from the floor, Bill, are 12 of... Uh, Roosevelt's 12 of 20. McCutcheon is 4 of 18 still. Uh, Roosevelt just uh, flat out uh, outplaying McCutcheon. The, the last series was uh, indicative of this when they took them to court. McCutcheon handling the ball, and the defense just outplayed the offense. Uh, Roosevelt's defense stuck it out, stuck it out, were patient, worked hard, and you'd think there would be an opening, but there wasn't, and the Mavericks just didn't score, and they, Roosevelt has the ball. Well, they passed up two perimeter shots that they normally would have taken if they'd been hitting them. That way, right. if you miss their first two or three shots, they have a tendency to not want to shoot. He should shoot the ball. Jolly knocks uh, Royer down, misses the shot. German gets the rebound. Just enough defense to throw him off stride. Paul Hart back in the player. Good defense by Roosevelt with the pressure. They're very fast, very quick, and the arm span really enters into it. They get their hands on the ball a lot of times. This is Hart fouled by Fields. 
Ray does foul. a good job of steering him over into the into the trap area and uh, gets help and they two team and they do a great job with it. He didn't have good position though. Second foul on Fields and Hart will go to the line one of four from there this afternoon. Let's see if he's loosened up a little. Perfect shot. 258 left in the half now. Good defense by McCutcheon. Excellent. Yeah. Hale doing a good job on Jolly. Now Jolly's doing the same thing to Ryan and move the ball around. And try to get a different angle to feed him, and they're, they're just not getting it done. McCutcheon's very. It's plugging it up. Herber. Hits. So McCutcheon's to within three baskets. Well, McCutcheon stays with him till the half, up to the half. The second half could be a different ball game for him. Six points for Kyle Kerber, a three-point game now. Fields. Drive. Oh, charging. We've got a walk. McCutcheon can cut it to one. Royer stood in there to take the charge. Well, yeah, Roosevelt's got the lead. They started to sit on it a little bit, lost a little of their aggressiveness, took a few bad shots. Now McCutcheon is back in the ball game. And I think Hart is playing a little better. I hate to keep dwelling on Hart. Geez, I, I'm glad he didn't hear me before. They had so much pressure, it made it worse. Well, he has to do their perimeter scoring, though. He, and he has to handle the ball for him. He's setting tempo. Nice move. He has done. Good job of penetrating, but he's missed three legs. Yeah, just a little tight. Hart over the layup. Oh. This was a foul, though. Right, so fouled him, and Hart will go to the line with a chance to bring Mavericks to within one. It's all about. He has to step up there and, and really relax now and forget about the intimidation that he just felt. Get the free throw down. Well, the Central Catholic faithful and the McCutcheon faithful both into the game now. Central Catholic playing Carmel in the second game today. And, of course, McCutcheon and Central Catholic from the Hoosier Conference. Big free throws. First one falls, and it's a two-point game. Getting his rhythm now. I think he'll shoot better from the floor now, too. Hart misses this one long. Fields is fouled, and he will go to the line as Kerber picks. at the Gary Roosevelt brain press. Ron Heflin is on the left. His assistants, Ronald Broom, Glenn Miller, and Benny Dorsey. A minute 44 left in the half. Coach Heflin has a rough road uh, getting down here to the summer state. His sectional region are as tough as there is anywhere in the state. So these guys have accomplished an awful lot just getting into the summer state. They really won the regional in convincing fashion, too. Fields misses the front end of the one and one. Chance to tie the ball game. A lucky break there for the Mavs. Mm -hmm. Hart in trouble. Gets it off to Kerber. Well, the Cutchins having a lot of passes tipped, but they're able to pick up the loose ball. Uh, they've they've uh, had the ball bounce for them a little bit here. Might get them back into the ball game. They can tie Good it speed. here. Here's Hale. Hale. High game. A Good minute pass. 11. Rod Hale with 10, 10 first half points. It's been an unusual. That's the reason the touching is back. Back in it. They just haven't been able to score too well. There's one. Here's one. That guy is instant offense, Bill. And, and he's uh, just a sophomore. I can see why he's in the ball game. But well, Heflin told me he had to bring him up from the junior varsity because he scores so easily. In fact, he's the one that replaced uh, 
No, I don't. I believe Shannon's one to replace uh, Jolly. Pearson is four of four from the floor. Fields, their leading scorer, has missed four shots from the floor and a free throw. He's three of seven. Bad pass. Bad pass. Can't afford to do that, but McCutcheon did. Actually, the tempo of the game has favored McCutcheon in the second quarter. I think uh, Roosevelt is a lot. Any one of these guys can take the shot and probably hit it. So McCutcheon really doesn't have anyone to concentrate on. They want Fields. Fields. Not quite. Three throw, uh, three, four, eight from the field in the first half for Scotty Fields. And McCutcheon goes in at halftime, trailing at one point. the first half by 10. It's Roosevelt 26-24. We will be back at Mackey Arena as the halftime comes to the first game of the Lafayette Boys Semi-State here on TV 18. March is Frozen Food Month and there's no better place than Payless to discover the variety of taste in frozen food. Come on, follow me. We have some for every meal with any taste, even snacks, desserts like four varieties of banquet family entrees or all flavors of homemade brand ice cream. Nutritious quick to fix meals as close as your freezer. Life was never this good in the Arctic. You know what freelance is all about? Meet you at Arnie's. Meet you at Arnie's. <laughs> For great pizzas, salads, and sandwiches, stop in at Arnie's in Market Square or Arnie's. Arnie. You can still save during Coral Ford Spring Financing Sale. We're offering 3.9% financing or cash back on all Ford Bronco 2s, F-150, F-250, and Ranger trucks, and on our Escorts, Tempos, and Mustangs. Take your pick, 3.9% financing or cash back, and save big. The sale you've been waiting for is on now at Coral Ford, Lafayette's first choice. Coral Ford, located one block north of the mall on Sagamore Parkway South. Let's take a look at the individual scoring as Roosevelt leads McCutcheon 26-24 in the first half. For McCutcheon right now, Rod Hale has hit uh, three out of four from the floor, four out of four from the line, and leads everyone in scoring in the ball game with 10 points. Kyle Kerber has six, Paul Hart has four of them from the free throw line, Steve Miller with two, and George German with two. For Gary Roosevelt, Albert Turner off the bench has four, Scotty Fields has six, but as we said, he's three of eight from the floor and missed his only free throw point. percent McCutcheon six of twenty-one for just under twenty-nine percent, Bill. So yeah, the I Mavericks. Think if they hit their, their perimeter shots at all, you know, they're ahead in this ball game by 8 to 10 points. Now, you mentioned uh, they're trying to hold teams to 50 points. You look at the scoreboard, and you see that the game is going the way they want it to go. It's, it's, their, it's their type of ball game, uh, but uh, the, the difference being that they were uh, just tight in the first quarter. I think that made all the difference in the in, uh, in McCutcheon getting into the ball game. Roosevelt, on the other hand, got the uh, lost some of their aggressiveness and uh, consequently they went down and uh, Jolly was in the ball game they started to throw in the Jolly he was successful and then they forced it and then they start forcing and their offense went downhill and they didn't score and McCutcheon came back and played a, a better uh, second quarter and got themselves back in the ball game okay we'll be back and talk about what these two teams have to do 
and the adjustments they have to make at halftime to come back strong in the second half. Stay tuned for more halftime discussion here as Gary Roosevelt leads McCutcheon 26-24 in the first game. No, we're not celebrating with dinner for two. Not even a singing telegram. Instead, we're having the biggest anniversary sale in Carpetland's history. Save up to 50% on the all-new DuPont Stain Master carpets. No, we're not sending flowers. But you'll find the lowest prices of the year guaranteed. Like multicolor and so cut and loop just $9.99 a square yard. Completely installed with pad. And you can buy now and make no payments until June. Look for Carpetland USA's anniversary sale circular. And remember, for value, selection, and price, nobody beats Carpetland. The Hoosier spirit, a winning spirit, is best displayed by teamwork and dedication. At the Bird Road, we have that Hoosier pride. We must coordinate our best efforts to serve our customers. Goals and dreams. Always remember that no one individual is more important than the whole team. At Bank of Reynolds, customer service is our team's main goal. Yeah! For over 50 years now, Reliable Exterminators has been locally owned, operated, and giving you professional termite and pest control service. They have grown considerably over the years to serve your needs even better. When you call Reliable Exterminators, you will deal with friendly and knowledgeable people. Reliable is very proud of their professional reputation. Reliable will provide pest and termite instance and control service for homes, rental properties, and all types of commercial businesses. That's Reliable. Reliable for over 50 years. Paul Stouter and Bill Berberian back at Mackey Arena. Good ball game at halftime. McCutcheon trailing Gary Roosevelt 26 to 24. Taking a look at the team statistics from the first half, you can see the field goal percentage. McCutcheon at 28.6 and uh, Gary Roosevelt at 56.5. McCutcheon with just six turnovers, Bill, yeah. and uh, Gary Roosevelt with just a two-edge and rebounding, and uh, McCutcheon at the line 12 of 16, and Roosevelt didn't hit a foul shot. That's why. McCutcheon is still in the ball game. Well, I think... Uh, Kawasaki, new in Lafayette. Here's where it all begins. Mr. Steve's Rentals. Save now in March and make your home more beautiful with this Western-style furniture group. Your choice of walk the group home, 9 dollars a week. Bring it on home. Five-inch color TV. Console VCR combination special. Both for only $19.95 per week. Rent to own everything for the home. Bring it on home. Home, Look for us in the yellow pages. Well, Bill, the team's back out on the floor, and a big concern to Rick Peckinpah this week was developing an eight-man rotation so his team didn't run out of gas late in the ballgame. Roosevelt, all year long, though, has not had depth as a problem, and Ron Heflin explains that. We, we We've played 10 kids all year, and we haven't put anything in, in especially for McCutcheon. We still play 9 or 10 people, and of course, if you've got five quality people uh, like McCutcheon has, uh, they can give you some trouble, but uh, we're going to play uh, usually 9 or 10 people and, and hope things come out for the best. We'll see if conditioning's a factor in the second half, Bill. Three of McCutcheon's five starters without... Uh, 
sure how tough bench is and, and, and substantiates uh, what uh, Coach Heflin said. We'll be back with the second half. It'll be Roosevelt's ball. They're up two. You can still save during Coral Ford's spring financing sale. We're offering 3.9% financing or cash back on all Ford Bronco 2s, F-150, F-250, and range trucks, and on our Escorts, Tempos, and Mustangs. Take your pick, 3.9% financing or cash back, and save big. The sale you've been waiting for is on now at Coral Ford, Lafayette's first choice. Voice out. And Carpetland history. Save up to 50% on the all-new DuPont Stain Master carpets. No, we're not sending flowers, but you'll find the lowest prices of the year guaranteed, like multicolor and so cut and loop just $9.99 a square yard, completely installed with pad. And you can buy now and make no payments until June. Look for Carpetland USA's anniversary sale circular. And remember, for value, selection, and price, nobody beats Carpetland. <laughs> We are back at halftime. The team's on the floor getting ready to start the second half. The winner of this game plays the winner at uh, Indianapolis. And right now, Bloomington South is up on Richmond at the half, 29 to 28. In the finals. Hale in that uh, first half. Uh, he Rogers is very had an excellent year last year, and then he kind of plateaued out this year. Come back uh, in this tournament, and he's uh, done a heck of a job for him. Uh, uh, he and Kerber are really the uh, leading uh, uh, the, the Mavericks in the first half play. Rick Peckinpah has something to be concerned with uh, here in the second half because Roosevelt scored 12 straight in the second half in the regional final game uh, last week against Hammond. Now, I think they had a streak at the, the beginning of the second half, and, and uh, I think Ron Heflin is a pretty good halftime coach. I think he can pretty much uh, convey to his team what they need to do to do what uh, they do best. They've got to watch the spurts, right? You're right, Paul. Uh, uh, Roosevelt would be a spurt team with their pressure defense, and McCutcheon has to uh, take a little time and be patient and move the ball, not allow that to happen. Each team going with its original five starters on the floor to start the second half. McCutcheon in the man-to-man. -the -man. They played a good defensive game. They packed in, too. Pearson is five for five. Great shooter. Four point lead now for Roosevelt. Pearson, five they lost down. it five seconds. The ball was in the air when the five seconds uh, were counted. It has to reach the player's hands inbounds. Nightmare for the five coach. or B four five. Nearly deflected. This is Ray over to uh, Fields. Pearson again. Nice job by Roosevelt moving the ball around against Stone, getting the ball where they wanted it, right in the middle. Nice, easy shot. Well executed. 12 points for the sophomore, Michael. He didn't get it at the peak of the jump. He got it while he was coming down, couldn't handle it. Just as you said, Bill Roosevelt putting together a mini spurt here. Yeah, a mini spurt. They need to be six points. Uh, they could make it six points right here. See if they go to pure deflection in the second half. Yeah. Pearson couldn't get a handle on it. McCutcheon did a good job surrounding him. Hart dribbles it off his leg out of bounds. I don't think he had a shot there, though, Bill. It looked like it was one on three. Yeah, he could have been a little brought it out. Set it up. McCutcheon hasn't taken a shot yet. The second half. Well, that's, uh, they've got to get a shot, at least a shot every time they have possession of the ball. Pearson again. Uh, the big man for Roosevelt. 
the sophomore. You remember that game Bill Walton had in the final uh, NCAA final back in the early 70s? He hit like 10, 10 or 20 shots in a row. I don't go back that far. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is a fantastic player. It's Roosevelt by eight. This is Preston Smith. McCutcheon looking for his first shot of the second half. They're passing the ball well right here. Something they didn't do at the start of the game. That's right. They didn't look this good at the beginning of the game. Going to have a foul. Rod Hale being held. Are they going to call it on Kenneth Shannon? I believe they are. I think it was on Shannon. Three zone on the out of bounds. Moving the ball well, forced in there to Hale, but they gave it to him. Rod Hale, big basket for the Mavericks. They're within six again. It took them two and a half minutes to get on the in the second half. Oh, good feed by uh, right zone. Sixteen points, and he's eight of eight from the floor. Most of the shots from in the paint. But some of them have been in traffic. Some of them turn around jumpers. The cut you need to keep peace here with the basket. There's Hale. Hale. They haven't been able to shut him off in the in the in the, in the uh, post position. They allow him to get the ball. Hey, darling. Did I give you my tell? They still lay. Russell left the floor, and that's why he was called to foul. I think Hale realizes he's, uh... Really do the hatchet job on him, in other words. Right, uh, prevent the three-point play. Well... Here's the man that shut Hale down in the first half, Roderick Jolly. Rod has 14 points. He's looking for his 15th here. He's been perfect from the line this afternoon. Uh, Jolly's the type of player that if he gets the ball in the right position, uh, have a tremendous effect on the game. The Mavericks within five. Five minutes left in the third period. 34-29, Roosevelt with the ball in the lead. To get the hell inside and then get it out for the short jumpers. Uh, uh, been very successful against Jolly by packing back in there. They're, they were all back on him, stopped him from shooting, but they allow a lot of them outside. They took, Roosevelt took advantage of it. Those are five straight field goals here. There we go. Oh, that's Hart's first basket. It's first, it's first from the floor, that's right. That might loosen him up. Still a five-point game. Albert Turner. Turner coming. believe he's a defensive back in football. Now it's a 65 shooting edge for Rose. Elbert Turner, Scotty Fields, Marvin Ray. They've got uh, Jolly pretty well fenced in there. Going to leave a lot of room the outside for, for the shot. Now they get it to the big guy. Hart takes it away again. Nice job by Hart. Long pass, Kerber wasn't looking up. Rick oh, Peckinpah is up. A timeout on the floor, not charged to the catcher. 38-31 in favor of Roosevelt with 3.47 left in the third period. The Hoosier spirit, a winning spirit, is best displayed by teamwork and dedication. At the Bank of Reynolds, we have that Hoosier pride. We coordinate our best efforts to serve our customers. Time, hard work, and dedication will help you achieve your goals and dreams. Always remember that no one individual is more important than the whole team. At Bank of Reynolds, 
Customer service is our team's main goal. As uh, the Panthers went in at halftime, up by two, but McCutcheon has come out. Paul Hart has a perimeter jump shot. They got the ball under to Rod Hale. He's done the... Well, we're getting more exciting uh, to a coach than uh, throw the ball away. A lot of things upset coaches, but I think throwing the ball away. Uh, shot of the jacket is, uh, you just don't win ball games when you do that. And Coach Beckenpah was irate, and he tried to stimulate him there. I noticed uh, during that timeout, let's see if they do any better. I think they're really down now and working at it. They don't want to let this ball game get away from them here. They're seven down. This is Marvin Ray. Scotty Fields. Their best shooter. Good shot for him. He really hasn't had a good day, though. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. Which is a big help to McCutcheon because uh, they would really be out of it if he would have been hitting a shot. Well, and after a made basket, they go to the press, and the less baskets Gary makes, the less McCutcheon has to face full court pressure. The way they're turning the ball over, that's an advantage. Hale from outside. Yeah. George Durbin, a leading rebound. With the offensive board, it's back to a five-point game. Well, I think Hart and German getting into the game. Ray misses, and German... Kerber aren't communicating oh, very that's well. A long shot. It was blocked. Kerber the rebound. Hit. Oh, that was Preston Smith. Preston Smith, and that's his first basket. He's capable. He's listening up. I think McCutcheon is looser now than any other time in the ball. I think they're starting to play their game. Well, they're certainly believing in themselves. And they hustle on D. That'll loosen them up on D, too. Oh, no, great move. Get oh, man, give Turner all the credit in the world. He brought his team back with that play. And here's Escher. Smith up to Kerber across the line. Good job of bringing the ball down. Oh, no. Good job by McCutcheon of controlling the ball game now. Does it fake? Yeah, here's that. Here's that play. Uh, the foul. Foul, yes. Now Rick Beckenpah, I think, would like to be less than five points down right now, but by the same token, I think his team is uh, certainly well within striking distance. Well, they, they're doing a good job of handling the ball. What happens, uh, they end up some time taking a, an ill-advised shot and you know we talked about that at the beginning uh, of the game that they can't afford to take bad shots shot selection is the uh, utmost importance and the other thing uh, is turnovers this is true of any ball game but it's very very important in a game like this because Roosevelt is a great team as far as getting the spurts and and uh, dominating the game and uh, uh, McCutcheon's game plan is a good one they're they're doing better now at any other time during the game. Roosevelt has to be real tough now. They're going to win this ball game. Now Ron Heflin on the bench. He wanted a shooting foul call. Turner again, well short. German in good position. The touch him boxed out very well that time. Yeah, they prevented the old uh, offensive rebound. Kerber. McCutcheon fans, they love it. Roderick Jolly, number 13. I think any time you wave your arm at a player like that taking a shot, the referee's going to call a foul. Roosevelt uh, doesn't seem to be upset. They keep their poise. And uh, they won a lot of ball games, a lot of close ball games this year. 
And uh, Coach Hamlin said it's due to the to the mental attitude of their players. You can see that out there. They're not getting uh, upset or anything when uh, McCutcheon makes a run. They stay and stay with it and come back. The trail right. Kyle, six points. Kerber, the quarterback of the football team. It's kind of funny. Kerber plays Paul Hart when uh, Hart decided not to play for his senior year. Hart was the quarterback as a junior for the Mavs. Kerber took over the reins as a senior. Back to a three-point game. Eight points for Kyle Kerber. Minute 15 left in the third period. Quite a bit. Pearson Fallible, he misses the shot. Shannon the rebound. Turner misses. Foul underneath. Jolly over the back. The big guy is incredulous, but look at him. Yeah, he's uh, he's an excellent student, Paul. He's uh, quite a quite a person. Here you see it. Rod Hale had inside position on him. Ball game is going uh, McCutcheon's way. They've got the momentum right now. Roosevelt, good move by Coach Heflin to the press, which is always difficult to play against for any team with these with this great uh, Roosevelt team. Kerber out of the trap. Jolly and Hale are really battling inside. We've got the both teams packing in there on their defense. Now what? A push off on Rod. Of those guys have been, have been as many hands fly off the jolly and flown off a hail and now they finally call one at a key point when McCutcheon really needs the points well that's happening an awful lot in basketball today the low post areas are, are so vital jolly threw the ball out could have just turned and put it in the basket Cannon. bad shot with six seconds left German. Let's see if Kerber can do it twice. Way away. Oh, not a bad attempt. He nailed one at the end of the first period. McCutcheon goes into the fourth quarter, down three. Pretty good position for the matter. For over 50 years now, Reliable Exterminators has been locally owned, operated, and giving you professional German pest control service. They have grown considerably over the years to serve your needs even better. When you call Reliable Exterminator, you will deal with friendly and knowledgeable people. Reliable is very proud of their professional reputation. Reliable will provide best and termite inspections and control service for homes, rental properties, and all types of commercial businesses. That's Reliable. Reliable for over 50 years. You've waited long enough. Kawasaki's got... Kawasaki, all under $2,500 at your Kawasaki dealer. See them all at KT Kawasaki, new in Lafayette. Make your house a home with Mr. Steve's Rental. Look what's in store for you for March. Perfect for home entertainment, a cable-ready 25-inch color console TV and VCR. Watch and record your favorite shows and movies. March special, just $19.95 a week. And look at this beautiful Western-style furniture group. Your choice of a five-piece or six-piece grouping, only $19.95. March is Frozen Food Month, and there's no better place than Payless to discover the variety of tastes in frozen food. Come on, follow me. We have something for every meal and any taste, even snacks and desserts. Like four varieties of banquet family entrees, or all flavors of homemade brand ice cream. 
Nutrition's quick to fix meals as close as your freezer. Life was never this good in the Arctic. You know what freelance is all about? We are back, starting the fourth quarter. Each team with one possession. Neither team was able to get a basket. McCutcheon with a chance to cut it to one. George German underneath. Lost the ball. He was fouled by Kenneth Shannon of Gary Roosevelt. On Shannon. That will be number three. He and Broderick Jolly, the only players in the game with three fouls. Uh, along with Latrell Wrightson. So three Gary Roosevelt players with three fouls. No one from McCutcheon's side has more than two. George German had two quick ones. Paul Hart has two. And no one else. Hey, uh... Both teams forced uh, a shot. Both of them were were not very good shots. And uh, that'd be indicative of the way this quarter is going to be. They're, they're still, uh, they're getting, the, they're doing the pressure and and uh, it's going to be very close, I think. Big miss by George German on the front end of the one and one. 40 to 37. In favor of Gary Roosevelt. This is Pearson. Pearson, 25 to sophomore, has 16 points. He hit his first eight shots. That's Broderick Jolly, the big guy, 6'8 with three fouls. McCutcheon really doing a good job inside with its defense. They have an excellent defense. They work very hard at it. Good drive by Ray. You're going to have a blocking foul called underneath on McCutcheon's George Turman. So that would be the third foul on George. I think that was a good call. It was very close, but I think it was a good call by the ref. Six and a half minutes left to play. A lot of, a lot of time for all the player goes up uh, and is able to shift to the side a little bit and the man standing there for the block has to move and that's what causes the uh, the blocking foul uh, more of, of uh, leaving their feet and then uh, moving laterally that it caused a lot of trouble on these uh, charge and block calls this is Marvin Ray at the line for Gary he's hit two back to a five point lead for Roosevelt no press. Roosevelt in the one, three, one. They're gonna, there's trapping here, maybe. Haven't indicated it yet, though. Kerber misses. And a foul over the back. It's Pearson. Michael Pearson, number 25. His second foul. Not too bad a shot. Points here. They replay it didn't look like Pearson uh, was the offending party Bill he seemed to go straight up and Preston Smith jumped into him but Smith goes to the line with a one in bonus and hits the first so McCutcheon is down four with 617 to go and right now Rick Peckinpah wants to talk about to see if there's any piece of strategy he wants to bring out here to try to erase his four point deficit we will be back right after after this, McCutcheon down four. We'll have a free throw. It's 42 38 in favor of Roosevelt. Beat you at Arnie's. Beat you at Arnie's. Meet you at Arnie's. For great pizzas, salads, and sandwiches. Stop in at Art in Market Square or Arnie's at Columbian Park. You at Arnie's. There you see the score. Gary Roosevelt up 42 to 38. Ron Flynn disperses his charges. And Preston Smith will come out of the McCutcheon huddle, go to the line, and shoot the back end of a bonus. Shit. Gary uh, plays uh, for a quick team. They play a very cool ball game. And uh, as I said, they've won a lot of games this year by not forcing things. They're content to, to play with the other team. And they've done a good job uh, during the year. We'll see if they can do it now. 
Both these teams have done a good job, at least in the tournament down the stretch. They've won the close ones. This is Reitzel. Six-point lead. And there's the Roosevelt Press. You don't know, uh, Ms. Roosevelt, who's going to do the scoring, which is a great thing. The ball taken away from Kerber. Fields down for the layup. Passed up the dunk, which is a uh, good thing. McCutcheon down eight now. 46-38. Wide oh, open, wide pass. 17 points for Rod Hale. McCutcheon needs two straight defensive shutouts. Getting into the game has to play a lot of tough defense. They'll let Broderick jump. Bad position, takes the shot. Preston Smith the board. Gets it away to Kerber. Kerber over to Hart. 4.45 left. Hale is fouled by Jolly. That's the fourth on Roderick Jolly. Or is it? No, they yeah. got to call it on Pearson. They call it on Pearson. Jolly was right there. Here it is. Uh, Hale going up. Yeah, Jolly got the ball clean, but... The Pearson just Pearson moved before. into him with his body. Big free throws for Rod Hale. In the uh, sec final down at North Montgomery, Rod Hale hit two free throws in the last minute to give McCutcheon the edge that needed to beat Crawfordsville. Kind of ironic, both these teams games early in the season to teams they came back and beat in the sectional. McCutcheon lost to Crawfordsville. They came back and beat each team, respectively. So good at what they're doing all teams, down the stretch, started to play their best basketball. Well, it's going to be very interesting from here on. We've got quite a ball game, a very close ball game. And, uh, you know, both these teams will be going to the final four, and, you know, you stop and think about it, uh, what happens right in this part of the ball game, they make the... Hale misses the second. So it's a five-point lead for Roosevelt, 46-41. Pearson doesn't get it. Only his second miss. Good Go shot, Mark. Shot. Made. I'm impressed with Roosevelt's mental, though. They, they really play well mentally. They are in this ball game, take good shots, pass the ball. On. There's a lot of teamwork. Very unselfish. With his spot. Good positioning goes about too. Good, you put hustle on their zone. Now McCut has to really play tough on the D. Roosevelt wants a timeout. Ron Hedden wants to talk about it. With 3.53 left. I wonder if Roosevelt's gonna spread the floor here, Bill. Well, I think it's too early. Uh, too early, Paul, uh, but I thought that uh, they could have killed a lot of clock there. Of course, you don't know uh, what they're tuned into, what their strategy is, but you know, you can, you got to kind of hide your uh, uh, the killing the clock, and I think uh, it's too early to do that, but they could have killed some clock and got a nice shot. I think that would have been the best thing they could have done uh, that particular time. But uh, from here on out, uh, McCutcheon, if McCutcheon is going to do, win this ball game, they're going to win it with their defense right now. They're going to have to play awfully good defense. We haven't seen McCutcheon really come up with uh, any type of pressure on perimeter. Well, they, they don't really need it. As long as they hustle and play it, they, they have to get a little closer to their men now on the defense because they can't play any kind of a passive defense. They have to force or some kind of a turnover from Roosevelt. And of course, Roosevelt, they're gonna have to keep their cool, which they've done up to this point, get a good shot. But McCutcheon has really done a good job of sagging and uh, hurrying the shots just enough. Roosevelt hasn't been able to get him to drop. Jolly. Gonna take, take a jumper. Yeah, good touch. 
He's, he's got a pretty good touch, the big man. That was a very, very big basket. And it's an individual play. Rod Hale took a gamble. He laid off Jolly, thinking that he wouldn't shoot. And Broderick called his bluff and made the basket. 48-41. Three and a half to go. McCutcheon needs points and needs him in a hurry. They're in the zone now. Roosevelt's going to be content to shoot from the floor. Hale shot blocked by Jolly. Well, it, 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 there was no way he was going to shoot that ball over Jolly. Half the foul. They can't afford to get any further behind. They're down seven right now with just over three minutes to go. such a good half-court game, Paul. Everyone uh, you know, expected a lot of pressure, full court up and down floor type of thing. And, and they they uh, play, they took McCutcheon and are playing McCutcheon at their own game and beating them. The winner of the Lafayette Semi-State will play the winner of the Indianapolis Semi-State. And right now, it's Bloomington South in the fourth quarter holding a two-point lead over Richmond. Bloomington South, a lot of Lafayette fans might remember from the Hall of Fame Classic, they lost to Concord at the buzzer in the afternoon, then came back and beat Lafayette Jeff in the night game for third place. Central Catholic, the winner of the Hall of Fame Classic. free throw shooter, but today he's two of four. Lost the ball. He walked. I think he got five. Poked the ball, but it knocked Marvin off balance. Marvin's not a very big kid, though. Kept his cool. Roosevelt still in the driver's seat with just over two minutes left. They're up seven. Cutchin's got to get a shot off pretty quick. Oh, nice play. Good pass, and Preston Smith couldn't get the alley-oop down. Preston can jump. Rick Peckinpah hung his head when he saw that one not fall. Yeah, there's kind of a dying gasp, because he knows they're not going to get that ball back very often. They're going to have to foul. They ought to be fouling right now. Yeah, Peckinpah's calling to foul Reitzel. Reitzel, a 94% free throw. It's amazing how they... He made it. Well, he's supposed to. 
McCutcheon uh, just it, too bad because uh, I think they can play better ball than they showed out here today. It was a great effort on their part. It wasn't a matter of effort. It was just a matter of they really didn't, their abilities didn't come out today. They didn't get loose. They didn't really get loose throughout the game. Nine point lead with a minute and a, and a half to go. Smith has the pass deflected. It's Roosevelt now. No about it. He went right out after him and forced another turnover. It's a pretty emotional time right now for Rick Peckinpah and the Mavericks. They played about as well as I have seen a team play to their abilities down the stretch this season, Bill. Yeah, they've had an excellent season. They have nothing to be ashamed of. They've they've accomplished an awful lot. It, it's uh, it's too bad we have tournaments where a team loses at the end, uh, but that's the way it is in Indiana, and they'll be all right after a while. But but uh, they just I I was uh, I felt for them because they didn't really play. Some of the some of the players' abilities didn't come out today. Yeah, but some of the other boys are better ball players than that, and I think they'll they'll agree. And uh, they could have had the ball game, but you got to tip your hat to uh, to Rosa Crest with their ability to play a very good half court game. They are more of a half court team than a full court team. Well, there's no uh, there's no question. Gary Roosevelt is one of the best teams in the state. After watching them here today for the first time in a game situation, and having seen Marion this year. Uh, yeah, I take my chances with Marion, but uh, I wouldn't feel comfortable if Bill Green and I have to face this Roosevelt team. Well, this team could, uh, they, because of their physical abilities, could could give anybody, uh, they could beat out of the state. There isn't any question about that. Uh, they're very unselfish, too. And another thing they've got, got going for them, they don't weaken themselves. Uh, Coach Heflin said this, and it's absolutely true. They don't weaken themselves at all with their bench. An 11-point lead now. Yeah, their bench today, Bill, 14 points, and McCutcheon's bench just two points. Outstanding bench. No. Not their game. This is George German feeding Rod Hale. Just under a minute left. McCutcheon in it now. Be interesting to see how the Panthers handle it. We've right, got so two quick, quick guards there, Paul. It's awfully difficult for McCutcheon to get the ball. You see pressure in, in the night game, no matter who wins the second game today, Central Catholic or Carmel. Well, I think this is where you're uh, uh, playing several players on the front. Coach Heflin may make a difference in the night game. Uh, they, and they're a well-conditioned team. I think they're well-conditioned. They, they should be ready to go tonight. Kyle Kerber, his third foul, and Pearson at the line. Pearson right now with the 16 points. He hit his first eight shots. This is this one. He was an 82% free throw shooter. Bank shot no good. Hale the rebound. The catcher needs to get it up in a hurry. Down nine. Half a minute left. Jolly picks up a foul. It's the last thing that well, Coach Heflin wants to see happen. It was a, it was a foul, all right. Uh, Jolly just doesn't realize... Uh,
Oh, a very fine pass. Mark Ray fouled in the backcourt with 28 seconds left. McCutcheon down right now, 52 to 45. Seven points in 28 seconds probably can be done, but there isn't any question he won't have deserved this game. Too oh, yeah. They, they played excellent basketball. They kept their poise. I, I'm very impressed with that. Very impressed with their ability uh, in, on the half court handling the ball. And, uh, unselfish. Gets little guy means a lot to the team. Marvin Ray now with seven points, looking for eight. Fields has eight, but Pearson with 16, leading Roosevelt. Turner had eight off the bench. Ray again, perfect at the line. 14 in the ballgame for McCutcheon is Ken Adams, a 5'9 senior. 24 seconds left. him down nine. Rick Beckenthal pulling out everything, I'm sure, from his bag of tricks to try to get his team back in this ball game. Well, I'm not too sure why he called a timeout at uh, this particular point unless he wants to put some people in token appearance because uh, the ball game is definitely uh, over with. McCutcheon had to hope Roosevelt would miss its free throws, but Boy, if Roosevelt's ahead on you late in the ball game, 78% as a team. They got they got X free throw shooting. You got the ball in the hands of guys that shoot 86 and 94%. This this team is going to be hard to beat uh, from here on out. There isn't any question about it. They play an awfully solid game of basketball. I mean, there's some there's some NBA teams that don't shoot that high as a team practically. Richmond now ahead of Bloomington South at Indianapolis. So the Red Devils possibly making a return trip to the Final Four. Well, that's a close one. Two fine teams. Well, when you have a fellow like Jolly in the middle, any bomb out of the corner by Hart, no good. German underneath is fouled. Roderick Jolly has fouled out with 17 seconds left. I noticed he had a lot of playing time in this ball game. Coach Heflin thinks that the best thing for him is to come in off the bench rather than start it. And uh, he's absolutely right. He it, it showed here today. He played uh, quite a ball game. Jolly has six points. The five fouls. He blocked two shots. Just having him in there taking up space means a lot to a basketball team. Well, he did a good job on Rod Hale. Hale has 20 points, but most of the time that Hale got his points, Jolly wasn't in the ball game. Fifty-four, forty-six now. Respect and ball to Jimmy Boy who comes back in and Kyle Kruger was sitting on. All these players are deserving uh Sure, Coach Peckinpah is very proud of the way they played all year. It's just a great, it's a great uh, relationship between the coach and play anybody. George German misses the second, but Cutchin fouls immediately after the rebound. German now with five points. George German gives way to Steve Miller. German a junior, Miller a senior. So Rick Peckinpah with all his seniors on the floor right now. And they're going to be tough next year. They have three, three starters back next year, Paul, so they ought to be quite a ball team. They lose two real good ones, though, uh, that are out there right now, Hart and uh, Hale. Yeah, German at 6'5", Preston Smith at 6'2", and uh, Kai Kruger all from back. 
Hinsdale have a fine ball for Kenneth Shannon with two free throws. It's a 10-point game now. Hart over to Royer. Way short on the shot. Shannon is called with seven seconds left. Remember, coming up, the second game, Lafayette Central Catholic against the Carmel Greyhounds. That'll be a great matchup. Ought to be a very close ball game. And this one really, Bill, uh, although it's a 10-point spread now, once McCutcheon got back into it late in the first half, Everybody game going into the fourth quarter, and uh, uh, Roosevelt showed their uh, true colors here and came through and, and won the ball game. You got to give them credit. Shannon at the line, hits the free throw. He shoots 77%. Shannon with five points, looking for six. He also has uh, nine rebounds today. Leads everyone in the game. How many different players scored for them? Five kids. You know, that's usually the way they play. They they don't have a, to score a couple of players dominating the scoring. Everybody chips in. Well, Coach Humphrey. Going to the final game tonight. The shot does not count. No bad. Hung on the rim for a while. 57-46. Gary Rosen over McCutcheon. The Mavericks end the season at 20 and 5. And Roosevelt advances with their 20th straight victory. They are now 23 and 2. We will be back and recap the first game here of the Lafayette Semi-State as Gary Roosevelt takes it by 11. 